This Torah class is brought to you by TorahAnytime.com The great kever of the Mashkiach, Moran HaMashkiach, Rabbi Cheskel Levenstein, known as Rabbi Chatzkel. He lived from 1885 to 1974. He was Nifter, Yud Ches Adar, 1974. Yesterday, Shabbos, was his yard side, he was the uh, mashkiach of the Mer Yeshiva in Mir in Belarus, as well as in Eretz Yisrael, and then later the mashkiach in Panovich. We have over here, Mokoim, Menuchas, Marein Rabbeinu, Oyved Hashem, Bechal Koichos Gufai, one who served Hashem with all of the energies of his body, Venavshoi Minura, from the time he was young. Lamad, he learned, Velimed Das Amuna, Veshasa Belibois Talmidim, Yira Shamayim Tahara B'mesha Chamishim Shana. So Reb Chatzkel imbued within the hearts of his Talmidim for 50 years. Avoidas Hashem and Yira Shamayim. Reb Shach said that even 500 years ago he would have been reckoned a giant because he was someone who was so weak and yet even in his 70s and 80s he waged war against the Yitzhahara. Reb Shach says that what Reb Yisrael said about his Rebbe, Reb Zundel of Salant, we could say about Reb Chatzko. Chazoy said about Reb Chatzko that he had emuna in his hands. He had emuna chushes. You could see emuna as a reality in Reb Chatzko. Reb Chatzko was born in Warsaw, and when Reb Chatzko was only five years old, his mother, Zlata, died. His father, Rebbe Huda, remarried. He then he learned in Yeshiv and Lamja, and then he learned in Radin under the Chafetz Chaim, and the mirror... Uh, and the Mashkiach of uh, Radin, Rav Yerucham Levavitz. And Rav Chatzka would say that the following shmuz of Rav Yerucham is really what led him to go to Kelm and to study the Kelm Mahalach. Rav Chatzka uh, would say that when he heard from Rav Yerucham, the Gemara that says that Tcheles is doim el yam, and Yam is doim el rakia, and Rakia is doim el kisei akavayd. And Rav Yerucham asked, that people could wear tzitzis, they could see tcheles, and yet they're not moved by it. How could such a thing be? Said Rabbi Rocham that without limod musr, one is not aroused. One's emuna will not come to practical fulfillment. And therefore one will not be able to change his midos. And Rabbi Chatzko would say this shmuz was the greatest lesson of emuna in his life. From then and on, he resolved that never to remove his attention from Amuna. He said for a year and a half he had no peace because he felt the pressure of the question. How could someone live without learning Musar? It's mamish, a, a matter of Misa v'chaim, it's a matter of life and death. Until he said in Hashem's mercy, he acted upon the advice of his teacher and uh, he went to learn in the Talmud Torah of Kelm. And many yeshivas were either founded or influenced by the influence of Rav Chatzkel, whether the Mir in Poland or the Mir in Yushalayim and the Panovich Yeshiva, we have from Rav Chatzkel the Ari Cheskel, seven volumes of Musar. And when we were learning the Archais Chaim of the Rush, we were learning Ois Chaf, where the Rush says that when a person gets up to one of the three tefillahs of the day, he should leave all of his Asakim and be Mispalel and the chief. Hanhaga should be to guard one's eyes from anything that doesn't belong to him. And says Rabbi Cheska Levenstein that it is known that the Rush wrote the Archas Chaim for himself. But you see the great Yira of the Rush, that he was afraid to even look at something that didn't belong to him, especially during Tefillah, as it might cause him Chemda and confuse his Tefillah. And that is the connection between these two in Yanim, that the importance of being forsaking all of one's asakim at the time of tefillah and the hanhaga of not looking at something that doesn't belong to him. So, Tehei Zichrei Barach, Zuchusa Yagein Aleinu, Ve'al Kol Yisrael. Amen. You've just experienced another Torah class brought to you by TorahAnytime.com.